been asking if I am in a relationship <laughs> or, um, you know, what's the tea on that and, um, okay. I'm just gonna say it. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be doing a QA. and a I haven't done like a full on q and A in a long time. So I'm really excited. I love doing these videos because you guys, I feel like can get to know me a little better and it's just really fun. So in this one, I asked you guys on Instagram, I just posted a picture and I got a lot of questions from you guys. So I'm gonna try to answer as much as I can in this video and hopefully the next time I do a q and A, I I will try to answer a couple more. A lot of them are also like repeated questions, so yeah. So in this q and I'm gonna try my best to be as honest and just as real as possible with you guys. Um, so I hope you appreciate that. This is gonna be a long video, so grab your tea, your coffee, your snacks, your water if you'd like. That is my drink of choice. And let's get chatting. Okay, so shout out to Heaven Durant because she asked like hella questions. I'm just gonna um, pick one of them though. What is my favorite song at the moment? Um, my favorite song at the moment is honestly anything by Daniel Caesar. I have been loving Daniel Caesar. If you guys didn't know who he is, he is a Toronto artist. Honestly, his entire Freudian album was amazing. I really love New Roses, like especially the beginning. Oh my God, it's like an eargasm. It's so good. But my favorite song, on the entire album I think is probably We Find Love. I think, yeah, I think that's probably my favorite song. Okay, the next question is by Sonia K. Platt. Uh, she says, favorite part of the city, um, which I guess she means Toronto. Uh, my favorite part of Toronto is definitely Kensington Market. I talk about it so much, so I feel like I don't even have to say that much. How do I describe Kensington Market? It's very like urban. Um, very street, but I just love it. Like, I feel like that is just a perfect representation of Toronto in all aspects. And it's just such a cute area, so I love that area. FM3L asked, how did you grow your self-confidence and any advice to people who struggle with self-esteem and self-hate? Oh, that makes me so sad, like self-hate. I really hope you aren't hating yourself. Um, how did I grow my self-confidence? I get ask this so much like so many people in my dms and everything are just always asking about how i grew my confidence and honestly i'm not the most confident person in the world but i truly believe with like every ounce in my body fake it till you make it if you can fake it fake that you are a confident person you walk into your room into a room and you just act like you are like the coolest person there and you just have your shit together and everything, people are gonna believe it. Whether or not you believe it at first, the more you act that way, the more you're gonna start to believe it. So I know I say that all the time, but faking it till you make it definitely helps. Um, but at the end of the day, everyone has self-esteem issues and insecurities and it's totally okay to deal with that. I feel like just embracing them and acknowledging the insecurities that you have is like the first step to really gaining that confidence. Lena.e asks, if you could change your name, would you, if yes, to what? Um, I thought this was a really funny question and I needed to answer this because I actually did change my name. Maybe you guys know this, maybe you don't. Um, my name before Aisha was Gizman. G-I-Z-M-A-N. So in my vlogs, a lot of the time you might hear my brother or my cousins or my parents calling me Gizman. That is what I call like my Hariri name, my home name. All my family calls me that. But um, probably about 10 years ago, it was 2008. Yeah, actually 2008. I changed my name to Aisha. It's just a name that I always really loved. And my mom told me that she wanted to name me Aisha before her brother promised, <laughs> um, before she promised her brother to name her first daughter Gizman. Um, Gizman means wish in my language, in Harari, and I think it's a beautiful name. I just was not happy with it and I wanted to change it to Aisha and that's what I've been called ever since. Um, and yeah, so th there's a little story if you guys didn't know that. For Mona asks, if you weren't in YouTube, what would you be doing? Um, if I wasn't doing YouTube, I would most likely be in some sort of marketing or brand role. Um, or maybe even PR for a beauty company. I could totally see myself doing that. Honestly, even if I was doing YouTube, say it wasn't like super successful or something, that's what I would be doing. Like it's, it's something I still am very passionate about. Honestly, anything in beauty I am very passionate about or the YouTube space or, you know, just online social media in general. Um, I just get it. 
and if I wasn't doing this, I would 100% be doing that and I would still be very happy with it, but obviously YouTube like brings me so much more joy and working for myself is just a really fulfilling thing and just like it feels good, so. That is what I would be doing though. Homai Rack underscore underscore asks, where do you see yourself in the next 10 years? In the next 10 years, geez, I never think that far ahead, <laughs> like ever. Um, but I feel like, okay, so I'll be 32 in 10 years. I feel like I will probably have all my children <laughs> or like just having my last child. Um, I wanna have all my children like before I turn like 35 for sure. So I feel like, yeah, I would be married, I would have children, I would hopefully still be doing YouTube if that's around. If YouTube isn't around, then I would either be back in my corporate job um, or maybe even with my own company, I don't know. I think it'll be really interesting to come back to this video after 10 years um, and see what I actually end up doing. So this is another question by FM3L. She asks, are you open to the interracial marriage? Um, I've never not been open to interracial marriage. I think it's a beautiful thing when two different cultures meld together. Underscore, 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 touche, underscore, <laughs> asks, how do you deal with stress and other problems and how do you overcome them? Honestly, when I'm super, super stressed out, I will, talk to someone, like talk to a really good friend. I'll talk to one of my best friends about it um, and just kind of vent. Sometimes I think it's okay to just cry. Sometimes you just really need a good cry <laughs> to get all your stress out. Alice.Miller asks, what were your highs and lows of this year? I thought this was a really cool question. Um, I had a lot of highs this year. I graduated university with my bachelor's degree. Um, I hit 100K subscribers, which was amazing, something I genuinely never thought that I would be able to reach. I went to VidCon as a featured creator, the first hijabi featured creator ever at VidCon, which I thought was like, what? <laughs> Me? <laughs> um, that was definitely probably one of the biggest highs. I shot a commercial with YouTube. Um, there were a lot of highs, like YouTube Black. Now my lows, I feel like in the very beginning of this year, um, I was kind of I don't want to say depressed because I feel like people who are actually clinically depressed might get offended. Um, but I was at a very low time in my life because I had just come back from the best four months of my life um, in France and, you know, traveling the world. And then I was back in Waterloo, which no shade to Waterloo, but it's just not my city. <laughs> um, and being back in school and like not traveling, not seeing my friends from my exchange. I was just at a really low time in my life. I like never left my apartment. Um, I saw my friends maybe once a week. Like it just, it was, it was a really low time. And um, luckily, alhamdulillah, I got out of that funk. Um, I think what I did to make that time in my life a little better is I turned to YouTube and I was posting so much in the beginning of this year, like minimum two videos a week while still being a full-time university student. And that really helped me and just your guys' support and yeah. But definitely the highs outweighed the lows this year, alhamdulillah. Sadia's underscore ruminations asks, is there a mistake you made in your YouTube career? What was it? And what, if anything, did you learn from it? Um, there definitely were a lot of mistakes I've made in my YouTube career and I feel like that has to do with me not taking it seriously. I never ever thought, like literally ever thought that I'd be doing this full time, that I'd be sitting here, this would be my full time job, like never in a million years did I think that. So I didn't take it seriously. Um, I took year long breaks. Um, I just, I wasn't posting for a while. Like I would literally take like six month breaks at a time. I remember once I didn't post for like nine months. Like it was just, it was crazy. Um, and I always think to myself, like had I been super consistent like I am right now, where would my channel be right now? I feel like that haunts me a little bit, but you know, everything happens for a reason. I feel like everything with my channel kicked off at a perfect time, I feel like it was really important for me to finish university and go through all of that before dedicating myself to my YouTube channel. So I'm really happy with how everything turned out. Um, so that's that's what I learned from it. I learned that, you know, things take time sometimes. 
So Mama SSA underscore asks, what's your advice to someone who wants to create content on YouTube, but parents don't agree with it? Example, beauty lifestyle channel. Um, <laughs> funny you ask that because I actually didn't tell my parents or ask their permission to make my YouTube channel. I kind of just did it. And uh, honestly, I feel like this is bad advice, but I would just do it the way that I did. If you have a passion for something, I don't think you should ask permission. Obviously, if you're like underage, like if you're like 13 and under, you should probably ask if you could be on the internet. Um, but yeah, I don't think there's really anything to ask about it. I'm really happy that I went the way that I did because had I probably asked my parents if I could do this, uh, they would have said no and been like, are you crazy? Why are you putting yourself out there like that? So, um, yeah. Sayida Hana Fitness asks, are you ever coming to the UK? Because girl, I need to meet you. I love the UK. I love going to London and I'm definitely going to plan another trip in the spring for sure. I need to visit Manan's new kitty. Like she looks so, or he, sorry, sorry Manan. He looks adorable, so. I will definitely be in London soon. What's the best and worst thing about living in Canada and do you see yourself living there forever? Um, do I see myself living here forever? No, <laughs> um, but I do love this country and I'm really happy that I was raised, born and raised here as opposed to anywhere else in the world because I feel like it's really shaped the person that I am. The part of Canada that I'm from, Toronto, is very diverse. Um, I was raised with a lot of different cultures and I feel like that just made me who I am today. I'm a very accepting person and um, I just love the people here. The people here are just definitely what makes Canada, Canada, and I love it. The Names Mulki asks, would you rather fulfill your biggest wish or resolve your biggest regret? Definitely my biggest wish because I don't really have any huge regrets and even if I did, like, everything happens for a reason, so I'd 100% want to fulfill my biggest wish. Were there any difficulties when you started YouTube and what are the challenges you faced as a YouTuber? Um, there weren't any, any difficulties when I started because as I mentioned, like I didn't really have a goal for it. I kind of was just posting content because I wanted to um, and it was just fun for me. No one was really doing it at the time, like anyone that I knew personally um, slash anyone that looked like me uh, was doing it. So I just kind of started and I'm really glad it happened that way because I feel like the passion grew over time like that. Um, and. Just difficulties in general, I feel like just being a black Muslim hijabi um, is just a challenge in itself because, you know, not even willingly, you kind of close off your niche and close off your um, content to a specific group of people, even though my content really isn't geared towards a specific group of people. And I know there's people that support me and follow me that aren't even hijabis, Muslim or black. <laughs> So S. Faiza with an extra A asks, how did you find the time to post on YouTube when you attended school? Um, she's currently struggling to find the time to edit and post, uh, blah, 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 okay. If you have a passion for something, you are gonna find the time to do it. That's what I say about anything and that's kind of how it was with me. I loved posting videos and content on YouTube, so I made time for it um, on days that I wasn't studying for exams or finals or whatever I would be filming or editing. Um, there was a lot of sleepless nights, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> um, but I just made it work. Like, it's like, it's like having a part-time job or something while in school. Like, you could do it. It's gonna be hard, but you could do it. Someone asks, three things you never leave home without. Uh, my phone, my wallet, or like my card holder, and... A jacket I really don't carry that much like I have my backpack and stuff but most of the time I just take my car card holder and my phone and that's pretty much it so I'm a very basic simple gal see ham 1125 asks if you ever would create a company what would you sell um, I don't know I really don't know I always think about that and I definitely I don't know I don't want to do hijabs but at the same time I feel like it'd be cool to do hijabs but everyone does that so I don't want to but I definitely am coming out with merch in 2018 so keep a lookout a lot of people keep asking about advice for YouTube I have a whole series on that so I will have it linked somewhere on the screen over here if you want to check that out someone asked when you first 
began filming videos on YouTube? How did your friends and family respond? And that's from Shamila underscore. Um, as I mentioned, didn't tell anyone. I think, actually, I feel like my brother knew. I think my brother knew because I was using his email or Gmail or something for AdSense because I was too young. <laughs> you needed to be 18 plus for that at the time. I think it's still like that. Um, and maybe some of my cousins knew, but I definitely didn't tell them about it until like my channel, not even until a specific amount. Like I, I just didn't tell them about, about it for a while just cause I was low-key embarrassed of it. I'm not gonna lie, but when I did, like they found it totally cool and they supported me and watched my videos. I honestly, I feel, I wish I filmed my parents' reaction when I told them cause I honestly don't remember. Um, but I also don't think they really cared or like understood enough to care. Someone asked if I'm still doing the keto diet. No, I'm not. I've been off it for a couple months now, but um, I really enjoyed it. I did lose weight from it and we, or I may or may not go back to it. We'll see. T Fuller 78 asks, how does your religion or customs affect your dating life? Sorry if this is too personal. This is kind of a confusing question because technically in my religion, you can't really date, but let's just be completely honest, like, we're not perfect and, you know, I've had relationships in the past, um, but uh, I'll, always with, like, you know, a certain level of... So I feel like the main reason as to how my religion or mainly even culture affects it is, like, you don't really tell your parents if you're talking to anyone until you're super serious about them, like, until, you know, you're ready to put a name to it like get engaged or whatever so I always kept very quiet about it and you know honestly none of the relationships I've had in the past were super serious anyway so there's not even much to talk about in that sense but I don't know it is kind of weird it's it almost feels like this taboo subject like ooh, dating and whatever like your parents never talk to you about dating until like you graduate university and they're like where's the husband so it's just, it's weird, honestly. I wanna make a whole video on it because it's honestly weird, but I don't wanna be judged by like everyone. <laughs> if you know what I mean. Uh, someone asked, um, I cannot pronounce her name, but she says, when you started wearing hijab, what made you wear it? Um, I think it was my cousins. All my cousins wore the hijab and I'm younger than all my cousins. So they just kind of influenced me. Like no one ever told me to wear it. Uh, my mom obviously wanted me to wear it because she wore the hijab as well. Um, but I kind of just put it on myself because everyone else was doing it and it just felt like the right thing to do. Could Sia 98 asks, when did you start seeing results from working out and eating healthy? Um, and what kept you motivated? Did you take before and after pics? Uh, when did I start seeing results? I think at about the month mark. I'm talking about like the first initial time I lost a lot of weight. It was about the month mark where I noticed, like, noticed a difference and I didn't weigh myself until then and I lost like a significant amount of weight and I was like, crap, this is actually working. Like I should continue it. And what motivated me, honestly, myself, I'm not a very like, what's the word? I'm a very intrinsic person. Does that even make sense? Like I motivate myself. It's very hard for me to be motivated by other people. Um, so it's just myself, like my own goals that I wanted to reach. So, and I did take before and after pictures at the time. And now that I look at those after pictures, I'm like, damn girl, your body was banging. So I'm trying to get back to that point. <laughs> Amina.Hassan asks, what memory still makes you laugh? <laughs> There's this one distinct memory um, of me and my cousin Iman. And it was at, I think the X. There's like this, um, what's it called? Amusement park every or carnival, I guess, every year um, in the summertime called the X and, or like the CNE. And um, there was this one ride that was like, I think it was called the zipper or the belt or something. And it like goes like this and it like flips upside down. Me and Iman were in it, we were really young. And we were in the most excruciating pain. Like every time we flipped, we would bang our head on the wall. And literally it was, it was so painful to the point that we thought we were gonna die. So we were like reading Quran, like, <laughs> We were reading Al Fatiha, we were like, Ya Allah, please get us, get us out of this. Like, I'm crying right now just thinking about it because it was the funny, ex funniest experience. And anytime we bring it up, like, we just crack the F up. Like, man, we were, we actually thought we were on our deathbeds. Like, we thought we were going to die that day. 
but it was just so painful. Like I, I'm surprised we didn't get a concussion, honestly. And the second we walked off the ride, we pretended like we were chill. But then when we saw our dads, we just bawled, like we bursted out crying. It was hilarious. Oh my God. Hannah.k.a asks, is your business degree effective to your career as a YouTuber right now? Or are you planning to do something with it later or get, go back to school? Um, so I took a degree in business administration and I concentrated in marketing in my fourth year. Um, marketing slash brand communication and I definitely think it is very useful to my YouTube career now. Um, just the way that marketing works can definitely be applied to YouTube. And I feel like that helped me grow my channel in a way, especially with my internship that I had last year. So everything that I learned in school, I'm definitely using to my advantage right now, whether that be negotiating with brands or, you know, developing contracts and everything like that. I think it was very, very useful. So I'm very happy that I went through that and graduated um, because it is useful. And, you know, if I decide to go back into the um, workforce, which I don't know if I could after working for myself, <laughs> but if I do, then I, I know that, you know, I will have the right education for it. So Gushti girl underscore 91 asks, what does your African parents think about YouTube? Um, they think it's cool. My mom didn't, actually, they both didn't really understand it at first. Um, but yeah, they think it's cool. The only thing they don't like is, one, I was traveling a lot this summer for YouTube and they didn't really like that. Or my mom didn't really like that. My dad thought it was cool. Um, and then also, they don't like the fact that I'm in my room all the time. I take my work very seriously and sometimes I'll be up to like literally 4 a.m. working on a video, editing, um, and they don't like that. They feel like the work-life balance is really difficult, which I don't agree with. I think that if I wanted a better work-life balance, I could definitely make time for it, but I get so into my work sometimes and because it doesn't feel like work to me, I have no problem like just doing it on a Saturday and Sunday, where, whereas like normal people, you wouldn't take your work back home and continue it on the weekends, you would actually relax. Um, but it's different when you work for yourself because, I don't know, it's just a very different dynamic, so they're not really huge fans of that. There are so many good questions that I want to answer, guys. I feel so bad that I can't even answer all of these. Um, Muslim.Drake, I love this girl and her GP or GP, her DP kills me. You guys have to check her out. Um, but she says, how do you style your hair under hijab? I think I see cornrows. <laughs> you know, we East African girls love that stuff, but I'm not gonna jump to conclusions. Um, yeah, I style it in two cornrows, two braids down the back and it's in a bun. So that's basically it, just two braids. Um, and I literally like, I take a shower dry it halfway, like dry my hair halfway and then just leave it in braids until I wash my hair the next time. Like it is never just not in braids. A3INU asks, what are your thoughts on people buying Instagram followers? Um, I think it's, I mean, I think anyone would think it's kind of bullshit <laughs> the, the fact that people buy their Instagram followers and their likes and stuff, especially when they're then, you know, presenting their work to brands and stuff and their work might actually be good, but you're selling fake you're selling fakeness, like it's fake. So I think it's messed up when people do that. Um, but I don't know. There's nothing I can really do about it, so. Noor underscore um, Musalim asks, how do you balance your life as a Muslim hijabi and look stylish at the same time? Cause girl, you always look poppin', thank you. So I would not say I'm the most modest fashion, like the most modest dresser in general. Um, all my life, even like before or even after wearing the hijab, I love wearing jeans, I love wearing skinny jeans and like cute tops and stuff. I'm not gonna wear a skirt and an abaya. It's just, it's not my style and it's not what I feel comfortable in and I know some people may disagree with me in that but that's just, that's not my style. Everyone's on their own path, um, so yeah. I j but generally I do like to wear clothes that like covers the butt and is a little longer and you know, I try to be as modest as I can, but I definitely am not like the most modest dresser. So um, shopping at places like Zara, they have really, really good modest fashion right now, which is really great. Even Forever 21, you just kind of have to look for pieces at stores that are slightly longer, slightly looser. Um, and don't be afraid to try different styles out, just trying to find your personal style. I don't think you have to like shop on sites like like those specific modest fashion sites just to look modest. You could definitely just work it out yourself. 
Someone asked, what's my favorite skincare products as of now? I can definitely think of two. So the first one is the Drunk Elephant Glycolic Night Serum. I'm looking that way because that's where it is. Um, my Glycolic Night Serum is the one with the pink top and then also my Caudalie Vino Perfect Night Serum, or Vino Perfect Radiance Serum is definitely like, if you want your skin to look poppin', those are the two products you need. At least the Caudalie one, the Junk Elephant one's like stupidly expensive, but it does work. Someone asked how I felt first holding the camera and vlogging, like when I was, you know, vlogging outside of my room and stuff. Um, it was very awkward. Um, and she asked like, do I have, did I upload the first vlog you filmed? The first vlog I filmed was actually back in high school. It was 2013. Um, and I vlogged, I think it was my last exam or like it was, it was a day I remember I had an English exam or something and I was also going to see Taylor Swift at the Red Tour in Toronto and I vlogged that day and it's on private now, <laughs> but I did vlog. Maybe I'll put like a little clip in here. Just finished my exam and I'm super excited. It was just an English exam, so it was really easy. Um, but I'm in my school parking lot right now, so I really hope no one sees me because this would be really awkward if they saw me talking to myself. I finished like at 2.15, which, I mean, it was a really, really easy exam, so... Yeah, I finished early, so I think I'm just gonna go pick up my prom dress, um, and probably go to Target. It's really hot, it's like, um, 27 degrees out right now, which... I don't really know what that is in Fahrenheit, but you guys can Google it if you want, but, um, it's super hot out, so... But yeah, that was my first vlog, so yeah. Fatih underscore Al Qadi asks, why don't I do PR unboxing videos? I did do them at first, but then I, I don't know. I, I kind of feel like they're bragging sometimes. Like, I don't want you guys to be like, oh my gosh, she gets so much like PR or whatever. I really don't. Like, I don't get as much PR as you probably think I do. Um, and I've been taken off some PR lists because I stay really honest on my channel. This I have actually never admitted to my channel before, but you guys know I love Tarte Cosmetics. I was on their PR list for a while, but I talked about one of their blushes or it was their highlight or something. It was a highlighter that I actually bought. They didn't send me it. Um, and I didn't like it, so I featured it in a, um, in a favorites video, like when I was doing my favorites and regrets. Um, so I mentioned it in one regret video and... I don't know if they saw that or maybe they just stopped liking me in general. I'm not really sure what happened, but they stopped sending me products. Um, the girl that I was friends with from Tarte stopped responding to my email. So not really sure what happened with that. Uh, I don't really know where I'm going with this, but I thought that I would just spill some tea real quick. <laughs> so Tarte's kind of shady to me, which is kind of unfortunate because a lot of their products I, stu I still love and use, but yeah, with PR unboxing videos, I don't know. I, I show PR on my Instagram. So if you ever want to see what PR I get, follow me on Instagram. It's at Aisha Harun, and you will see that. Uh, a couple of people ask, why don't I reply to DMs? I try to reply to as many as I can, but you guys have to understand, I get a lot of DMs on the daily. Some are just random questions, and some I just... Like, I do answer a lot. Like, I answer a lot of DMs, and, you know, people that have DMs me in the past know that, but sometimes I honestly just don't have time. <laughs> Someone asked, I think this is a really good question, um, what do you think is next for the Black Muslim community, and what will be accomplished? What do I think is next? Um, I'm not sure what's going to be next, but definitely in 2018, I want to see a lot more representation with Black hijabis or Black Muslimas in media and you know, in YouTube in general, I feel like this year I have gotten a lot of opportunities that many hijabis as well as many black hijabis have never been able to experience and although I love that and I'm so appreciative, like I shouldn't be the only people that are being like that are able to experience these things and I definitely want to see a lot of, you know, my fellow hijabis and my fellow friends put on the map as well. Um, so hopefully people start to open their eyes in 2018 and see that, you know, we're bomb and we need to be recognized. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna end this Q&A with one last question that I have been kind of avoiding. Um, basically marriage, relationships, do I have a boyfriend? Who is he? What am I doing? Like, just so many questions about boys and relationships. That's probably why you clicked this video. Um, Low-key clickbaited the title, but you know what? I'm still talking about it. So, first of all, 
A lot of people ask about marriage, when I want to get married. I do want to get married very soon, inshallah. I've always said that I wanted to get married before 25, so inshallah that happens sometime soon. Um, people have been asking if I am in a relationship <laughs> or, um, you know, what's the tea on that? And, um, I don't know how to answer this guys because I've never talked about this kind of stuff on my channel and <laughs> I don't know why I'm smiling so hard right now <laughs> okay basically you guys will know more about it very soon inshallah but what you do need to know is that okay I'm just gonna say it yes I am currently in a relationship um, my parents know about him, my family knows about him, a lot of my friends know about him. It's nothing like, you know, secretive or anything. I just wasn't really sure how to bring it up on my channel, wasn't really sure if I wanted to until, you know, things were official, if you know what I'm talking about. But you will know more about it in the future. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Oh, one last question. People want to know about babies, um, if I want babies. I do want babies. I love babies. Um, I probably have, like, the biggest baby fever ever. Um, and I always told myself I would give myself, like, one year, one full year of marriage before... I'm not married, by the way. I'm not married. But I would give myself one full year of marriage before thinking about having a child. I mean, obviously I'm always gonna be thinking about it, but definitely no children within that first year. And then after that, we will think about whether we want children or not. That is what I've always told myself, so. Um, ideally, I would want my first child before like 26, I think, or like at 26, um, or maybe even 25, I don't really know. I'm 22, guys. Maybe I'm just in over my head. We'll see. We'll see what God has in store for me. Inshallah, everything goes well, but I'm gonna end this video, and <laughs> I know the comments are gonna be a little crazy, but I hope that you guys enjoyed it and got to know more about me. My face is literally so hot right now because I didn't think that I was just about to spill the beans, but there we go. Um, and yeah, that's about it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if you want more Q&As and I will talk to you. Oh, also subscribe to my channel if this is your first time here and I will talk to you in my next video. God, I'm like all over the place right now. Okay, bye guys. <laughs>